to keep them from getting stagnant. Or they're twirling their mustache, a bit, yep. talking about their evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good there. <laughs> they are intelligent beings or creatures. Is there anything else you guys want to see around here? We can go look around this feature a bit more. I'm not hearing you saying. Sorry. Yeah, let's keep up uh, moving up this crack feature because I saw some additional ones, I think, up and to the right. If we keep following the crack. Sure. Or maybe. Yeah. There they are. Yep. Can we look at those two that are together at the bottom right of the screen? Sure. Oh, oh. <laughs> quite a few more. <laughs> oh, and there's more. Yeah. They just pop up. All right, video, go ahead and push in. So, so far we've only seen one confirmed male. Probably not going to see eggs under these two. They look like they're pretty tightly packed in their holes. I still think I see shimmer through here. Do you agree? Chad, during our science meeting today, you talked a little bit about um, what the males mm -hmm. might be doing uh, while the females are busy with their eggs. A viewer asked the same question. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, it's presumed that the females that are already there in the brooding posture have already laid fertilized eggs onto the rock. So there's probably not much of a... Um, a reason <laughs> for the males oh, to, there some eggs. to to be there for those females, but we do occasionally see solitary females that uh, are scurrying about the place, potentially looking for a male or potentially looking for a place to lay her her eggs. The uh, male will take that modified arm, the third arm, um, and actually place its sperm packet up into the mantle cavity of the female. And if she accepts it, it will then fertilize uh, the eggs, either internally or as she lays the eggs themselves. This is great. Thank you. Can we continue up to the next set of octopus? Sure. Thank Can you. Come my video. I think with that lower octopus, you could see how, while the octopus is respiring, it's moving a lot of water over mm -hmm. those eggs as well. Do we have an idea of how many eggs they might lay at a time when Annie returns. When Annie, yeah, yeah, we'll ask Annie. Yeah, I know that we've had a, some of these clutches or mops of over 40 for sure. Okay. But I wouldn't know what video. a maximum number could be. Seems there's still some shimmering going on down there in the lower left of that screen. A shot and then oh yeah, up in the top Upper yeah. one, definitely mm -hmm. some shimmering there. All three of these. You want to see the top one or you want to see the lower left? Let's see the upper right. All right. Good video. Yeah. All right, we can keep going, I think. Roger, go ahead and come mine. Up against the rock over here. Yeah, if we can take a look at this little plateau here. This looks... That reminds me of the octopus garden, sort of. But there's no octopus there. Yeah. <laughs> there might be nothing there. Yeah. You want to go ahead and push on in here, please? There's some of that rock discoloration right there, I think. Yeah, underneath the mm -hmm. brooding female. There might be a line up ahead of us. Yeah. yeah. Can we pan right? Sure.
a look and you can see a lot of the shimmering mm -hmm. over above that one to the right. <coughs> look at that. You guys probably already talked about that cool sea star. No, we have not talked about that cool sea star. Oh. Do you want to talk about that cool sea star? I don't <laughs> know much about that cool sea star, do you? <laughs> I don't. I could look in the taxonomy. We could probably part. find it in the guide. I, I, those, those are one of those. It's on the tip of my tongue. Jen's got this really neat identification guide put together by actually the chief scientist on the next shift, Erica, right? Erica Burton. Correct. Yes. Um, and so all the organisms that they've observed at Davidson in the past is in this great document um, with everything. I think it's down to the genus, sometimes oh. the species description yep. yeah. of what it is and where they found it, at what depth, and um, basically how Could it's you classified. Do you want to go hang out, Mike, please? From whether it's video you. or actually sample. Is that collected. a line to you up here, Mike? So... There you go, Chad. Is so there anything particular you wanted to see on this plateau? Well, when I saw the broken rock, I thought we might be getting into an area with some flow, but it doesn't look like it up that canyon. Okay. Video, can you zoom in on this potential line? Or is that a worm? That's worm. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Wow. Look at that. That's well, it a looks worm? like it might be two. The evil <laughs> just coming out from that worm. sediment pocket there. <laughs> it's like one of the. Oh my gosh, that's huge. So I think up into the right, I think you can see it going Two into the sediment yeah, and then another the one coming out. Mm -hmm. So that was an optical illusion that it was all one. Yeah, it looks like a line. And then they have like the other end of them is like a funny little T thing. Mm -hmm. The one I saw earlier anyway. Yeah. Let's have a look. Somebody online called them spoon worms. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. Um, unique. Spiral, yeah, made of sediment. Oh yeah. What's that? It's probably um, I think that's it passed pieces. through the digestive uh, system of a <laughs> worm <laughs> and was left behind in a spiral. Uh, show how cool. big uneventful. You can push in here. if you want to see that video <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> neat. there's two of them. You can well, see the little uh, digestive tract on the right, and then you can oh. see it's bigger. All right, who went to, to the novelty right, go ahead and come store? Right there, video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's that book. Ooh. Every <laughs> Every, everyone poops. Even all the animals down here. Do we know um, the steepness of the wall that we're looking at right now? I know it, it can be deceiving where it might look a lot flatter than it is in real life. So if you look at, I don't know if you guys viewing can see the map that we see with all the contour lines, but you'll see that we're in an area that has a lot of contour lines really, really close together which says that the change in elevation is happening over a very short distance. And so that suggests to us that this it's a steep incline. And so we're looking at some kind of wall. Well, there's some uh, group, small groupings, but still around mm -hmm. uh, kind of at 10 o'clock? Yeah. We'll see if we have enough tether to get over there. Okay. So what do you, when you say tether, what do you mean by that? Uh, there's a tether that connects both the vehicles together. And so Argus is the one that's attached uh, by a stiff cable to the ship. And then there's a soft, flexible tether. It's a yellow tether you can see in Argus view. If you run out of tether, you'll notice that you'll get yanked around. Um, Herc will get yanked around, and we will. It won't be very pretty for viewing purposes. The vehicles are completely fine. It's just it makes it harder to fly. Thanks for explaining that. Of course. So only Argus is attached to the ship. Well, they're both technically attached to the ship, yeah. but Argus is attached by a via six eight cable. We call it. It's a basically a steel cable. So when the instruments are deployed, which one goes in the water first? Uh, Herc goes in the water first, and then uh, and then Argus will go second. So we hoist uh, Herc over the side. You can go ahead and zoom yeah, in there, video. Yeah. Um, Herc goes over the side first, and then Argus will go second. Oops, sorry, I'll get you back into that view.
seeing any shimmering. I'm not seeing any obvious shimmering here. This, I don't see any obvious oh, shimmering here. Oh, look at that here. tiny sea cucumber. Oh, is that a sea mm -hmm. pig? No, it's a sea no, cucumber. Because it would have, cucumber. on both ends, it would have kind of the oh, appendages. Of, yes, sticking out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then can we see, there's two more to the right. Sure. Oh, there's some eggs there, I think. I think it was eggs, I, not. They looked like eggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there they are. There they are. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Are. Oh. oh, darn it. Sorry, I told you to pan, and then she went and showed us her clutch. Oh, sorry. You want me to go back? <laughs> no. She knew and we she were leaving. She probably covered it up <laughs> already. <laughs> are you sure you want to go? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I am interesting. I'm not seeing as much obvious shimmering water here mm -hmm. around these three. Now, it's possible we could get a respiration rate on that one right there in the middle. Sure, let me get us into a better position then. And we'll look to see whether or not it, it's, I think it's pretty obvious the way she's opening and closing. Yeah, that one. Okay. We're looking right at it, it's great. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Go ahead whenever you guys want. Okay. We're good. One. Uh, hold on. Bouncing around a lot. That's fine. Three. As long as we can see the siphon, we'll be fine. I just saw eggs to the one to the upper right, just to note. Six. Seven. Eight. Mm -hmm. Thanks for counting all that. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> it was like 11 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like a half on the look count was 11. How are we on time? Okay. Yeah, we're on time. Too much. Is that 12 or 13? That was 12. 12. Okay, only 30 seconds yeah. left, Jess. We're almost there. Sure. You're doing a great job. 13. <laughs> how t slowly time passes when you're counting slowly. <laughs> yeah. And time's up. Okay. Okay, 15. Great, thank so you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I didn't see any shimmering the whole time we were looking, really. All right, uh, anything else you, you want to see over here? The Can we zoom back rates? out and look around? And it come a little wide? Nice glass what? sponge. Do you want me to note the respiration rates? Ooh, that there? one up um, to the left looks Yeah, so I was just right. No shimmer. So and now, and now at about 15 uh, right above the lasers, please. Sure. At 150 sure. seconds. That rate's sec seconds. Yeah. Go ahead, video. Did you record the other one? Mm -hmm. uh, not. So this is a lot of tube worms. That's yeah. why I was curious what that was there. In some of the other spots in the octopus garden, we see a lot of those tube worms right above the uh, venting fluids. And again, it's another question. It's, do these guys settle here because of its bare rock, or is there something that benefits them? Right. 
Thank you. I do you think those are eggs right into the upper left looking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we um, pull out again? Come right, video? please. And do we have enough tether to look to over to the left? Yeah, there's a group yep. of four. Yeah, so we can look down here if you want. Okay. Go ahead, video. Anyone in particular you want to see? Uh, ooh, that one at the bottom looks like I see some eye spots, huh? Wait, or no, that was an eye spot. That was the arm. The, the arms. Are you looking what's next to it? Go ahead and come. Go ahead and push on in there, video. The, the night area. Yeah, I want to get some screenshots of that. Yeah. Anemone there. Oh really? Oops, sorry. Looks like that well could clean that little area up there, huh? Mm -hmm. I've got some getting some images of that whatever that night, night area. Night area. Yeah. yeah. So say it again. So that um if you count there's seven one, there's one, eight. Two, three, four, five, it's an six, octocoral seven. to it's the octocoral. left of the octopus. Okay. Uh -huh. And we found those at the other site with the octopuses. 2,000 2, miles away. Go ahead and push on the coral video. Identify it. Um, full zoom. Oh. So I'm Roger. just very curious if anybody on this cruise or our viewers are come a little are familiar with what that That's is good. down to like a genus level and based on yeah. this video, <laughs> which I know is hard. Well, and has it ever been collected? Uh, not you that I can find. Uh -huh. It's it's really funny when you go to identify deep sea organisms. You can really only push go on, on again. what other people have found. And That's good. Um, you're really limited to the identification guides to you know, six or seven. Thanks for the zoom. Do you, uh, I'm not sure if I got one with lasers. Do you okay, want to get one? Okay, that'd be a good idea. Kay. Sure, yeah, go ahead and come a little wide until you get the lasers in there. Okay. Let me come down Jason, a little bit. do you have any information yeah. for us out there about this octocoral? There you go. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Sure. I got I got a few images with the lasers. Thanks. Sure thing. All right, go ahead and come a little wide there. How's it going, Aaron? Take a look. Wait, let's see. I know it's out, so I'm thinking it's a female. Just my first initial impression. Go ahead and push yeah, on we there, moved the ship. Like We've only just been looking around. That's good. Yeah. One, I don't two, know. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All eight are out. So it looks like to me like it's a female. It the does. third arm to the right looks uh, yeah. pointy Pretty regular. and long. Yeah. I think that's just a, yep. It's a female. And that makes sense. There will be some females that are maybe trying to find a spot in which to lay eggs. And maybe this is one of your mid. What's on, what's she dragging? Oh, mm -hmm. she's just, that's her leg. Um, <laughs> maybe this is a. You were asking about like life stages. Maybe mm. this is a midlife octopus. Yeah. Midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find ones that are juveniles, but yes. What this would could you? Be a, this could be a pre-brooder. Based on other octopus species, um, do you know what kind of adolescent octopuses tend to look like? Based, like, I, well, the hatchlings, you know, have a very similar physical structure to these adults in that they do have webbing in between the arms that goes about midway down. I mean, I would think that might help you swim, so it's possible some of the juveniles are up in the water column for a while. Yeah, so let's, yeah, definitely let's watch this for a little bit and see if she comes in and interacts with the others. We've seen this several times before, uh, and the other brooding mothers tend to, um, and it's an interpretation, but tend to react in a negative way, like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll see if that happens here. Right. So, yeah. But maybe she won't even.
contact them. But perhaps she's a doula. <laughs> <laughs> And she might just be looking for food, you know? Yes. She might just be. I think this is what the, her motion, they describe that as crawling. You guys want is lasers on or so off for this? Oh, let's, we can have the lasers off for a while. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I have a few, quite a few images with, with the lasers. Okay. Mike, Mike, would you mind coming down a few meters? And again, you, the female that is moving about appears larger than those that are brooding. Um, and it seems, so it seems like kind of when they hunker down and brood, they kind of become more compact. And you know, we we talked about how they don't eat um, mm -hmm. when they brood, so maybe they just yeah, shrink that's because true. Mm -hmm. good point. Body mass. What's interesting is there's a lot of those little sea cucumbers around here, those little clear guys. And there's also a lot of whelks, so I'm wondering if maybe that octopus on the left, who looks a little lazily <laughs> uh, uh, sitting on the outcrop, maybe she's she has any s spent eggs, or maybe she's in a further stage of her embryos are in a further stage of development than the octopus to the right. I mean that's that's speculation, just based on the, the whelks around her. Video, could you zoom in on, um... Are she going to touch the other one? That's when they tend to get agitated. Oh. Looking when they're, when they're Look touched. at her beautiful eyeball. Mm -hmm. It would also be good to try to get a good view of the third arm on a female so that we can then have some good fruit. So you see all right of the there. arms yeah. on yes, this it. individual are long and they go to a point and they have suckers all the way up to that point yes and that'll be different in a male on the third arm from the right is that true of all or most octopus is it octopuses? always the third arm i'm not most octopus yeah from yeah. what i understand okay. there's there's one species with seven arms which is really odd is that an octopus mm -hmm. then or is that a septopus septopus <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like there's going to be trouble. <laughs> Are they going to make contact? Oh, the shadow's close. Oh, I love these questions we're getting. So many of them were well, things that were discussed oh. at the oh, science oh. Okay, oh. we might have contact here. And, and you wonder if there is some uh, water coming out of this area, if her arms can Are detect you going to come that. a little wide, please? Or if she's feeling That's around good. for that different water. Mm-hmm. I'm going to flip this back to our sanctuary folks. Oh, oh there we go. There you go. And what happens to the babies once they hatch? Do they still oh. hang out with the mama for a bit, or are they suddenly on their own? All right, go ahead and push in a little so bit there. So we've seen That's a good. few hatchings now. Chad actually saw them in person. I've seen them right after they've hatched. And they Come a little swim wide, please, up. Video into the water column. It's good. Now what we don't know is if they do that if we're not watching, meaning when we have our lights shining on them, that could cause them to swim up when normally they would crawl away. We so we can't say about that, but they do. We have seen them um, hatch and swim up into the water. And then after that, we don't know where they go. Off into the darkness. Mike, any chance you can come down like another two meters? Looks like she's going to move on from this site. Life is so slow in the deep sea. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's all relative, though. Yeah, if they only live two to four years. <laughs> They're on island time. Yeah. <laughs> in octopus time. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting uh, considerations for the recently hatched octopuses is that they're so little mm -hmm. and eventually they're going to get to places in the deep sea that probably have stronger currents than they're able to swim against. And so mm -hmm. it's possible that some of their dispersion and where they end up isn't necessarily under something that they're in control of. Mm -hmm. It might just be the, the mercy of the ocean. Yeah. Currents. 
I was also thinking there's the grenadier and the and the cuskills swimming around, and I'm sure a little octopus could be a lovely snack. I know they're pretty bright too, so if our lights we illuminate them. <laughs> Are you guys uh, good here? We're gonna yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, go yeah, ahead and come on to the left. Yes. I'll come back towards you, Mike. Yeah. Anyone in particular you want to go see? I don't know how much tether we have left to go to. Could uh, we zoom in on the one that might be senescent near those whelks? Oh, sure. Oh, unless we're going back down. I'm um, going back down, but okay. where, where are you seeing that? Sorry, Aaron, um, what's that? It was just uh, to the left of the one. What um, are those two doing? We had looked at, but it's uh, it's not a big big deal if we don't see it. This one down here. The, yeah, the one kind of right in the center of the the camera right now. Yep. We just don't really have that good tether, so might be bouncing around. Okay. Go ahead, video. Just trying to look for spent egg casings um, or anything, and even the one on the right, on the bottom of the right screen, I don't see any. Bottom right? Though. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Obvious. Oh, wait. Hey, video. Go ahead and come a little wide there. So we are looking at a lot of black rock, and at the bottom of the ocean, black rock is a basalt, and basalt is really heavy. It's a dense, dense silicate rock, and it comprises the majority of the oceanic plates. And so most of the places that you go and look at rock on the seafloor, it's going to look dark. Dark like that. Like this. Yeah, a lot of places it's covered in sediment. Um, and so you don't necessarily see the basement, but oh. at outcrops like this, which are in a sense nice buried mountains, sponge, huh? um, we do have the opportunity to see uh, some of the exposed rock, which is pretty neat. Video, you want to just do a snap zoom on the sponge here? Something different. Yeah. That's a really large sponge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and push in a bit more there, video. It looks like a clutch of octopus eggs. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Um, I, I think it's another deep sea sponge. We collected some similar samples in the previous cruise. It looks like that, like we had like these finger, this finger-like sponge. Did y I know you were saying that the cruise um, Previously, you had gone to the deeper site, and then you'd often focused on the shallow site. Do you remember if you collected this at a depth similar to what we're at, which is 3,300 meters, or um, if you were shallower? I don't know if we collected this, but we did collect some similar ones at around this depth, but they were smaller. I don't think we saw any that were this big. Are the lasers on? Uh, yep. Go ahead and yeah. come a little wider, video. We can get the lasers on it. And just for the viewers who tuned in, these are 10 oh, centimeter sorry, apart lasers. There we go. Just oh, wow, kidding. That is I a big sponge. <laughs> Thanks, I Jess. Lied. No, no. Sorry. I lied about the lasers being on. So oh, that's, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Half truths. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I got some pictures. Thank that's you. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Go ahead come on. Hey, can we zoom in on that hole? 
Yeah, definitely. Good video. If, or if that is, it might just be a sponge. Looks like a good octopus home. It right? does, and you can see a little bit of the oval duckle cement around the around the edge of it. That's cool. Thank you. I just I was sure. just curious. Go ahead and come a little wide. We can also see if we can look down into it a little bit more. Ooh, yes, please. Go ahead and go on in there, bit video. Not sure what we'll find. Okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in there, huh? But thank you for trying. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and come my video. Well, you can see that there's space underneath that area, so perhaps there's some kind of organism in there, whether it be shrimp, squat lobster, or octopus, we'll never know. Ooh, did we already go over to the right and look at that group? Did we just come from there? There's a whole bunch of them. We came from a little bit higher up on the screen, okay. so. Let's, uh, get into this area if, if we have enough tether. Oh yeah, no, no, this is actually a much happier zone for us. Okay, and then kind of start at the bottom and work our way to the top. Roger. All right, video, go ahead and push on in there a bit. You just want to drive by type thing? Um, I've, do you want to just drive by? I think so. I think if we just move along slowly and then they'll ask us to stop and pause. Sure. They're just talking among themselves, so. Oh. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Are you okay with us just kind of moving along or do we? Uh, yeah, sorry. We were talking about... um altering the dive plane a little bit um, as far as sampling goes, but uh You're gonna come a little wide video to move. That's good. Ooh. Go ahead and push on in there bit video. You wanna zoom in on her? her? Look at how her eyes look very closed. She's facing the outcrop. Look just elongated. Yeah. That's Gravity's awesome. taking her. Yeah. That would, that makes me think she's senescing. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt after my son did sleep well for nine months. <laughs> that. That's <laughs> what my, I looked like. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to tell you, you looked great. <laughs> you didn't see me. No, I didn't. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Let's go um, okay, if you can zoom out and then yeah, move up to the, the right. Oh, look at all this shimmering. Look at the uh, shimmering. Yeah. Wow. So is it oh, possible? And there's one tucked into the rock down there. To use the way down the, probe the shimmer there. Um, to get some of these temperature measurements. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Get some oxygen temperature. You wanna do temperature? Ooh, what's that? It's a jelly. It'd be great to be able to get one near that octopus and then one down by that one. That's Did you guys want to do a temperature or uh, oxygen um, but sample? If, okay, can we use the DO temperature log to measure the temperature first, and then if it seems high, we can use the temperature probe to stick it in the hole? Up to you guys. Okay, yeah, so let's you want do that. What's that? You want to use our temp probe first? So no, can we use uh, the other one first, the one on the yep. attached to the squeezer basket? Sure, video, go ahead and come wide, please. What's our approximate depth? 3,200. Uh, 3,202 is yeah. 6 meter altitude. Thank you. Yeah, full wide, please. And so now... Hmm. Let's Let me think about this. So will that be over here? Maybe oh, we'll just get our ready. Our oxygen... Concentration, oh. Oh, okay, we have a maybe on our navigation issue, so. 
We also don't seem to be feeding in oxygen data. You gonna land, Jess? Huh, yeah. I'm debating about it because there's a bunch of octopuses underneath it. Well, I can't take a temperature. So yeah. I'm flying around. Um, Jess, Better. you might as well just use the uh, Hercules probe itself because it doesn't look like we're actually recording the oxygen on the, with the other sensor. All right, is your other sensor just not on? It was on. Um, oh. I think we can address that once we find Justin. Sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was earlier. I did notice it was. It had readings on it. And uh, if you want, we can, for now, look at the one on Herc and just, just for comparison. We're just looking for any flow. Could we go somewhere where there's not such a high concentration of octopuses? Or do you want just uh, this it's exact location? Ideally, it'd be great to get it near the octopuses. But um, any any flow will, will do, if, that look, if that's easier. She's just uh, trying to say, can we find, like, I think, one where it's an yeah. easier spot for us to sit down? We don't want to sit on them. Yeah, we could probably look a little downstream, you know what I'm saying? And then we could probably find one with, that's easier to land without disturbing other octopuses. Okay, great. Does that work for you guys? Yep. Great. Probably could switch right there, though. About over there. That one right there. Who's yeah, if you can get in there, yeah. Wiggling about. This might be more interesting to video. Yeah, it's that's good. It's more just, um, well, we don't even we don't have the oxygen probe, so. It's just curiosity. But do you want to push in here a bit on this octopus? See if mm -hmm. there's any diffuse flow. Yeah, she's Good. moving around a lot. Is there a technical term for that? Canoodling or? <laughs> uh, do you guys see any flow here that you want to? Mm, I see I would some shimmering. I like I saw the some base. Of the yeah, there's a little bit at the base. I'm hesitant. How long will it take to do a probe? We might want to look for a site that's slightly more vi vigorous. Sure. Um, w I think the temperature that you guys measured at the vertical vent, you said was 10.7, 10.4. Yeah, so if we find uh, vigorous flow. All right, go ahead and come away then, video. There is another option over here. If you are just joining us, oh yeah, we are in the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, Davidson Seamount, 3,400 meters below the surface of the ocean at the Octopus Garden. Video, you want to zoom in here, see if we can find some flow? That's good. There. There's, I think there's a bit of flow right in front of us. See that hole? Okay, so there's an octopus kind of behind that rock, and then there's a little bit of a hole next to her. All right. I know that's not the most vigorous flow. It's not perfectly ideal, but it might be a good spot where we're not going to have to disturb an octopus, and we also, I don't think there's anything below us that's octopus No, there's related. no octopus below us. Um, so this might... This might be a good first try. 
Right, go and come on your video. Is it possible to to drop a marker? Or is that not that's not not yes. like a physical marker just like on the Yeah, we're, we're still having that. We don't know where we thing. are, so it'd be a, a it would be a random guess. <laughs> okay, but thank you. We are getting movement of our vehicles in high pack, which might be a good sign. So stand by. Happy? Yeah. So what we've asked the ROV pilots to do is to use this long temperature wand that Hercule has been adorned with. And we're going to use that to take a temperature of some of the shimmering fluid that we see discharging from the outcrop. And the goal is to use the probe to stick it into these or this, um, the vent holes or the orifices that the, the fluid is coming out of. Um, to try to get deep inside the outcrop. And the, the idea is to get the fluid that hasn't yet been mixed with the surrounding seawater. And so you're getting um, kind of a good picture of, of what, it, what it's like before it actually exits the outcrop. And so hopefully when we see this, when we stick the temperature probe in on the computers in front of the science team and the navigation team, we're gonna see a increase in that temperature. Um, probably not up to 10.4 degrees because the, vigor the flow is not so vigorous, but um, if I had to give a guess, I'd say we're gonna see like five degrees. Yeah, I was oh, gonna my. say six maybe, be up here. but I think five is probably more likely. Right now, we're seeing temperature around 1.5 to 1.7 degrees Celsius. So that's the surrounding waters. <coughs> and so, al although 10.5, Four degrees Celsius is also cold. <laughs> it is ten times warmer than the surrounding bottom water, and so if you can imagine if you're used to living in that cold 1.4 degrees water, the 10.4 is a it's like a hot sure. tub. The hot tub. Balmy. Mm -hmm. But it's like a going really swimming. intense hot tub. <laughs> it's like going swimming off of off San Francisco and then going to Hawaii and getting in the Video, water. Can you and zoom like, in ah. there? Oh, what did that happen? All right, come wide. Oh, are they? Oh, it's on the. S they're stuck together. I think it's stuck on the sloper. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, sweet. Where are we putting it? Um. God. So, so I think if we can we zoom in with the camera independently of the ROV and just make sure that that's the same spot. Yeah, it's the same spot. It's up to the upper left. Okay. You can see that where that octopus is, the kind of flatter looking octopus. Mm -hmm. It's to the right of that one. Yeah, that open hole. In the okay. Rock. Yeah, we might as well just Let's probe just and see. There's yeah, uh, there's like a nice. It looks like a gaping deep orifice. Come wide on that, uh, Herxus. Thanks. Again, and can actually you see in the bubble cam? Back row, guys? Yeah, even, so see how there's these two octopuses right in front of us, and then there's one kind of, you can see it's just the tip of its arm on the yeah. left. Mm -hmm. I think there's some shimmering right next to that. That might be a good hole if you can manipulate the arm in that, that way I know you're limited vice obstacles on the basket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, zoom in a little on Herc Zeus. Keep the basket in there, though. that's good. Just keep an eye on that basket. Yeah.
And so, so right now you can see the temperature we spiked a little when they picked it up. Is this kind of what you guys are looking for? Um, oh wait. It's really hard to see where you're yeah, at. Yeah, can you, can you see the bubble camera? Yeah. Open oh. 13? Yes, thank you. Yes, I can. Yeah, it's probably better. I can get a little bit of zoom on this, but it's not, it's not nice like the other cameras. Um, yeah, why don't we try there? That just if nothing else, it's a good shot. So we should maybe see the temperature increase. Um, okay, there's nothing. There's no nothing change. There. There's no change. change. No. But there wasn't the venting. The fluid just like wasn't shimmering so mm -hmm. much, so I think we gotta maybe look for a more appropriate place. See, th so if we move up to like mm, what would be nine o'clock, uh, is that? Can you guys reach that? Uh, Probably not. Never mind. No, It'd be a weird I don't angle. Think so yeah. We can uh, keep the arm with the temp probe and look for another spot. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Full wide on the Zeus. Cute. How's the nav doing? Oh, she's talking to him. this a little bit. Like that. Hold on, put this in slave wrist. Yeah. All right. Awesome. You happy there, Mike? Yeah. All right. Um, you want to just look over at the hose, at the suction sampler, and make sure it's not going to droop below the vehicle. Uh -huh. You guys can't really see it, huh? You can see the handle. It's just hanging down a little bit. It's all right. Okay. Video, are you full wide? Yep. Let's see, we probably can fit in here so that there's nobody here. Oh. I don't know if they could land there, though. Yeah, it's kind of Do a you see the one that's under the sponges, the top center? Top center? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can we just yeah. zoom in on it to see if that shimmering's real? It looks pretty good. Good video. Uh, I'm gonna rack a little forward there, Mike. Not sure. Where, where is it coming from? From deep inside, above her? Is that where it'll be coming it's from? It's probably, oh, if it's coming from there, she's she might be over a spot or underneath that ledge. See how you can kind of yeah. see there's a darkness uh -huh. in there. Actually, I don't know if this is a good spot to land where that elongated octopus is on the left of the screen. Um, I did, is there shimmering? Do you see shimmering? What's in those? See, it's not obvious, which makes me think that the temperature differential is not going to be so substantial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also... <coughs> yeah, I don't think that's, that's not going to be an easy place to get set up in. Okay. In no. Way, unfortunately. Okay, let's, uh, however, there is one over here. Do you want to come a little wide, please? This guy here. Video, you want to push in? This one here. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's, um, do you see any shimmer here, though, for you? Yeah. Off to the left? Yeah. And I right, video going to come Well, wide. I think I see shimmer in here. Let's try it. <laughs> I don't know 
know if I just want to see shimmering here. <laughs> I guess it's a good idea to do this too, so we can identify where we want to put the, once we get the, um, the nap working. The nap working, yeah. Yeah. You guys ready to start this dive? Um, actually, uh, wait, what? No. We what was that? Nav is working. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the wonderful Nav team. Hey. Uh, oh yeah. Aaron. Now you have to do do something. Aaron, else. you want to press stick lock? Aaron, You're not done. You want to press stick lock? <laughs> now for your next Thanks. trick. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> okay. So, Aaron, we're good to go to try and find the uh, vent. Is that right? Just give me a minute to get the DVL in, um, and then we will be good to go. Okay. So, are we uh, we're ditching the temp probe here? I think we'll find um, probably some better places. Router. Thank you. Well, that makes it easier on us then. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's some, um, what are those corals right there? The pink, um, yeah, mushroom corals. Is that right? What are those? Look kind of like golf balls. All right, just give me a couple of minutes to get a couple of good hits. Yeah, sure thing. Well, we're all excited back here that everything is getting ready to get going to be able to find hopefully our uh, first site where we want to deploy some of our equipment. Oh, in the bubble camp. Oh, yeah. So the bubble cam sees just like a wider view, and it's a, is it on the brow? Yeah, it's up on the bumper bar, generally looking down, but it's uh, we can spin it around all, all kinds of ways. And then the, the main camera, that is just, that's kind of within the ROV, right? Kind of in the middle of her Yeah, bodice. generally looks out and down. So where are we off to now? We are going to try and find that. Uh, what are we calling well, the vertical we're going to take a little bit of a spotty position, and we'll just Jen, try and get it in better. Jen, is that you talking? Yeah, I'm sorry, my microphone oh, we go. was away from there my we go. face. Thank you. <laughs> Took a sip of water and forgot to uh, put it back. Uh. Um, there is a location we saw a few months ago when we came back here with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, where. Um, the feature was running vertically through the rock, and we saw a lot of flow coming straight up this kind of indented vertical um, feature. And so there was kind of very high-looking flow rates there. 
Was that based on the shimmer? Yeah, exactly. Based on the shimmer, but you would also just see a lot of water moving through um, the area. And so it, it seemed to us to be a good place to try and really measure this um, water mass that's moved, or I don't know if you call it a water mass, but the water type that's moving up through these cracks and crevices. It seemed like we could get easy access to um, a lot of flow of that water so we can measure it over time. The key will be to find a location where we can hopefully leave the milk crate, which is a good size. And uh, so that'll be the trick. And well, first we have to find this vertical vent because it's not a large right. feature. Okay, we've been there once. Yeah, and then if, we f if and when we find it, then to be able to deploy the equipment. And what do we have in that milk crate Ooh. on our front porch there? What? Did you just scare her off? Yeah, on the bubble cam, an uh, octopus came over, and then oh, yeah. another octopus took off. Um, that Maybe was it cool. I wonder if that one's a male. Which one? The one that took off? No, the, the one that came over. There, and she was like, no, no. Yeah. All right, I'll try to get that better once we get moving a bit. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Hey, zoom in there, video. So this is the octopus that just scared off the other octopus. And let's try and look at that third arm it from the right. It looks modified, I think. Ooh, I think that one it looks like it was there. chewed on. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think, is a male. I don't know. What? I don't know. The well, suckers go all the way to the tip. Oh, it's like yeah, physically yeah. It the like leg is just ugly. Something, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. Just unique. Like uh, injured, that's like maybe? the first leg Wait, looks kind of mutilated there. Yeah, yeah, the first leg does. I'm looking at over at the third one. Oh, and it is. T yeah, you're right. That is definitely the one that's curled up. Yes. So it's more, it's almost behind her. If we could zoom in on that. Or him. It might be him, right? Andy asks, yeah. what's the Heath Robinson looking basket on today's dive? I'm mm -hmm. not familiar with that term, Heath Robinson. Anybody in the van? No. no. Yeah. I'm wondering if they're referring to the orange, what we've been calling milk crate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the heterocotylus. Yeah. So this is a male. So you're right, the male. Well, we don't know if the other one was a female. No. Could have been two males. But also to see that one arm on this animal has definitely um, had some damage to it. Well, there are a lot of, um, you know, other organisms living in this area. So interactions between different species wouldn't be uncommon. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was a crab. Well, <laughs> with some of these females, we've talked about uh, this, these other studies where you've been able to go back and re-identify the same individuals. And often that's because Aaron? they have some okay. sort of specific, yeah, have a look. unique physical trait, so that would be kind of that kind of thing, except mm -hmm. Argus this is here ish. At um little words at the other the side we found an octopus that had a half a leg. But we want to get up to here. Yeah, we'll come up. So just have it step up a little bit. Yeah, just do a twenty meter step. Okay. We'll go over there. And into the slopes okay. Oh uh, zero zero yeah. five. Yeah. Alright. Oh my gosh, we're gonna move the ship. All right, All right. full hey. wide video. <laughs> Bridge nav. <laughs> I'm going to do their porch for a minute. Yep. Can I have a 20 meter step bearing 005? Thank you. So we've got a little clarification here. Uh, Heath Robinson apparently is <laughs> a UK phrase for jerry rigged. Oh. Wow. oh. <laughs> it's probably talking about the duct tape contraction. Yeah. That's um, basically just a cover on the Osmo sampler, but you'll notice all those words written on it. That's a special message uh, from the tech who prepared the Osmo sampler to his Nona, who has been a big inspiration in his scientific career. Right on. I was wondering that when I saw yeah. that. That's a yeah, that's a tribute to his grandmother, who he's very close with. Okay, so we're moving the ship at what? 005? 005. Trying to get you guys up this way.